us tonight. Beginning of the year, we had fewer than this. It was Kathy and I and Jonathan. It was three of us. <laughs> well, that was the real short one, but we did. We were here, and for two weeks, and we had. You can't tell that. Yeah. Well, that camera's low enough that we can actually see people standing up. So if there's people over here, we do see them. You know. Over here. Right. Yeah. Uh oh. No, the camera's not. It's zoomed in so that it, it's like this. That's about it. Well, good evening. Let's, uh, if you want to stand, stand with me. 138. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. We'll get Jonathan to give us a note. Give us a note, Jonathan. He gave me a note that said, Pastor, I won't be here tonight. Okay, love. I think we know these songs. This one and the other one, I think, are pretty. Pretty popular, pretty well know the songs. There they are, glasses. <clears throat> On the first, 138, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll sing. Sing his blessed presence, live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful loving servants to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves, he's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Well, it's a good night to be here. It's a good night to be inside. It's raining, and the cats and dogs are rolling in under the door as we speak. So um, it is really raining. That's real rain. So it's raining pretty hard outside. So if you're on the way in, you should not be watching this by YouTube if you're on the way in, unless you're walking. <laughs> And uh, But we're thankful to be here tonight, and if you're watching by YouTube, I hope you stay warm and comfortable where you are. We're fine right here. Brother Davis, would you pray tonight? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful goodness. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you'd be in our group tonight, that, uh, that you'd give the pastor the words that we need, Lord, and we are a needy people. Father, we pray for our nation. And yes, Lord, amen. Father, we pray for those who are not amongst us tonight. Uh, please be with them. Give them safe travel if they're away. And Father, if they're at home and sick, we pray that you heal them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> okay. Um, of course, pray for the bunches and pray for Holly Cooper spending time with Jalissa and pray for Jonathan and Elizabeth that are down in Branson, and uh, pray for Brother Ralph, who's away tonight also, and um, spending a couple of 
of days with family, and that's always a good thing. As long as we get along with family. <laughs> that could be. Is it raining? No, it's just raining a little bit. You know. So um, we need to pray for, also I need to remind you about Vera, pray for her on her surgery on the 9th, that's Monday. And also uh, for Holly's mom, who's going to have cataract surgery on Monday, that's the 9th. She's having surgery on the 9th, yeah. Yep. Pray for Jonathan Elizabeth, they're traveling, they should be back by the weekend, or Friday, Sunday at least, and the bunches should be back with us on Sunday also, so most everybody will be back in their places, and um, Sister Holly should be back with us on, at least on Sunday, and then she'll go back, I think, is what I heard, and uh, okay, that's what I have written down. What else tonight? Yes, sir. I just want to pray to the Lord that we got a real financial blessing. You already know about on her prescription. So I'm really excited about that. And that had to be God. The insurance company was really excited. Yeah. So the insurance company did not want to cover, um, but then the doctor worked it out <laughs> and uh, cover medic medication costs. So um, that, that's a blessing. We've been living a blessing as far as medication and our, just our health care ever since we got back because we expected to have nothing. And then we found out that the, the VA would cover more than we expected and, yeah. you know, just keep paying your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Every little bit helps. Amen. That's so. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, just whatever you do, if you go to jail, just don't tweet about it or something, you know. Don't, don't tell the truth because people can't handle the truth. So that's good, though. That's good. That's a good blessing. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All okay. right. So the second batch of her medicine for her lungs, yeah, is still no charge. Yeah, I don't, you know, it, you have to make decisions sometimes, and you don't know what decisions are going to be, what the outcome of those decisions, and... Uh, I mean, we had health insurance with the mission, but it's pretty much pretty close to what the church gives us per month now, so we would not be able to do it. And, you know, it's 25% of our income. That's pretty high, <laughs> you know. So um, we couldn't do it. I mean, 25% of our mission income. We were paying that for 20 years. So, but we did get some benefit out of it. I'm sure they got on the winning side of that, but at least we uh, were covered and we were at least be able to see the doctors and things, and that's good. So what else? Yes, sir. I just also want to praise the Lord that my wife's doing so well. I can't believe, I mean, for four months we were out of church. I just can't go nowhere. I mean, she's getting around good. She's, she's even fighting me not, won't let me do the dishes or nothing. Now she's, she's on the go. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I just, no, I'm just making sure that Kathy heard what you said. I just. <laughs> she's fighting me to do the dishes. I mean, if I you know. tell her to do them, she's already doing them. I don't get to do them. Now, you know, concerning, concerning washing dishes, the people that were mad at me were my children. Because as soon as they left home, I bought her a washing machine. You know, they were like, why don't you do that when we were home? Well, I didn't need it. You had dishwashers. <laughs> You know, what did you? Uh, Dawn will tell you the same thing, Jason. Go ahead. You can ask her, text her. I'm sure that she's asleep, you know. It's 
midnight 10 or something over there right now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Have I done dishes? Yes. Do I cook? Yes. Not all the time, but I cook. I went home and helped her cook dinner tonight. You know, and dishes. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I remember that with my mom. Not a lot, but I do remember it. Yeah. You know what you should have done? Just lit him on fire and see if he smoked. <laughs> but you didn't smoke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when my mom was doing dishes quite often, I was carrying wood in for her stove because she used a wood stove and or out there splitting it or something. So, I, you know, I did some things that just, you know, but, uh, you know, we it's been 20 years since we had kids at home. It's been longer than that. And for quite a while, we had to start doing things. You know, have, you better decide you like the person that's in the house with you. So we, you know, it wasn't a problem of liking, but not getting on each other's nerves and things. And we just learned to do things together. And uh, we started cooking together and started cleaning the house together, laundry, everything. You know, so even though C.S. Lewis says that's not possible, men and women can't share housework, you know. One uses pronouns and the other one says what it is. Put this and that over there. <laughs> anyway, never mind. <laughs> if you haven't read that book, then forget it, and you probably won't read it. Oh, continue to pray for our missionaries. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Has it has it trended down at all since they changed it? Still too high. Yeah, okay. I'll trade you a little bit. I think I was 110 over 72 last night. Oh, that's not a good number because when it goes low, it indicates that my brain is not working far enough. <laughs> properly, so. I guess mine must be working pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the low blood pressure that's worrying them right now because it's they're worried about it leaking, and that's what the problem was is ischemia is what they call that, not scheming. Ischemia, <laughs> they blood bleed, I'm bleeding in the the tubes, whichever tubes they are. I don't know. The nylon tubes in my head or something, you know. Yes, do continue to pray for Jason and his blood pressure. And um, if you want to hang around me, I'm sure I can raise that blood pressure a little bit, you know. I think you want to go the other direction, though. Now, um, again, if anybody's online and watching and you have a prayer request, send it to Jason, my phone, Kathy has my phone, or she will in five seconds. And um, so if you do have a, a prayer request that you want to get in, make sure that you, I should have said that earlier, but we'll try to get it in before we quit tonight. Pray for the missionaries. Um, again, you know, lots of stuff going on. I know that the... Um, Demarest in, in Uganda are looking at a building for a new church plant. And, um, you know, so you can pray for them. They're on our list. We started supporting them in August last year. And they, um, they're doing a great job. He grew up there in Uganda. His parents were missionaries. And uh, they've, they've been on the field three or four years and done a good job. The... Um, uh, I mentioned earlier this year, maybe late last year, that Heritage Baptist in Lawrence was planting a new church in Topeka. They had 55 on Sunday morning. Now, they started with eight or ten families from, that were at Heritage that decided they were from Topeka, 
and they just stayed there. So they had a good start. But, and they, Heritage bought a building for them. Uh, I don't know if they have to pay it back or anything. That's not my, it's not my deal. I don't know. But, uh, but they are doing real well, and they had, they had their grand opening on Sunday, May 1st, and I heard that they had 55. I'm hearing something, but no, I just was trying to decide whether I was hearing it dripping on the inside of the building. <laughs> dripping on my favorite book. So there's a, I have a book in my library I haven't colored in yet, so it's my favorite book. So <clears throat> Go ahead and smile. It's all right. So continue to pray for the missionaries. Continue to pray for the Mahaffey family as they, they try to final up their paperwork and get back to the field and uh, pray for the others that are on the field. And um, we will be having a missionary here in September, uh, Nathan Fritz who is in Cape Verde, Africa. It's islands off the west side, north of, well, around, uh, I guess it's south of the Canaries. Sir? No, Cape Verde is way up here on the top. Cape is on the bottom. Cape Verde is up by Canaries, way up, almost in the entrance to the Med. September, yeah, Nathan Fritz. Be bringing his family. His dad had pastors over in Indiana. I don't know them, but I know that he does. And uh, good missionaries. This is the one I was telling you about that went up and helped the widow when the when the missionary died. This is the young man, and um, looking forward to having him here. Uh, they're good people. Cape Verde. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, they still things keep coming out. Pray for the civilian population. Yeah, it's war is one thing, you know. Killing civilian population is genocide, technically, and uh, nobody wants to call it that except for the president of <laughs> Ukraine. So, um. Pretty soon we'll be praying for Russia because Ukraine's is giving them a pretty big bloody nose. There's uh, civilians in the fight. Now, those guys, if they're civilians and they're fighting, they're not really civilians. So they might not have uniforms on, but they're supporting the, the war unit, war effort. But that's not what she's talking about. And it, we see it on the TV. Anytime you turn it on, I don't even want to turn TV on anymore. Don't want to turn the internet on. Don't want to get news on my phone. I, I just, everything is just so. And then um, our, the gentleman over on the other side of the border threatening everybody with nuclear weapons doesn't help. You know, I thought we had one loose cannon in North Korea. Now we've got another one. So um, real pariah is what they call them. So, yes, do pray for Ukraine and and around Moldova's next, and we have, I have missionary friends in Moldova. My home church in Ohio, they've been supporting missionaries there for over 25 years. And Moldova's a very, very complicated. Do you remember the name of that breakaway republic? It's, it's on the east side anyway. There's, this, there's an area, and they're all Russian speakers, and they are, but they're up against the border of Ukraine, down at the bottom, west of Odessa. And... They're afraid they're just going to come across or just go over there with ships and land and, you know, take it. I don't know what I heard about all this stuff. I just hear bits. You know, Belarus is uh, talking about going in, actually declaring war on Ukraine. And if they move west, then we're all at war because to the west of them is Poland. And we have divisions of troops in Poland. We also have all our missiles and all our tanks, and it's all sitting in Poland. So we don't want that to happen. You know, there's going to be a day in which the Lord finalizes all this, and a lot of this kind of stuff's going to happen. The way I read the Bible, I don't think that the church is going to be here when a lot of that happens. But obviously we're here, and a lot of bad things are still happening. So it's not that our theology and our reading the Bible is wrong, but we don't know the days and the times. 
that just goes to prove that we don't know the times or the seasons that the Father has put in his own hands. That's what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1. We don't know. So we could be in the last days. We could be 500 years short. You know, you say, well, things can't get worse than this. We said that 20 years. Take, take a moment and read the stories of World War I. Go downtown and see the monument. The 30 million people that were killed. It could get a lot worse. So uh, we do need to pray. I'm not going to take a lot of time to talk about it. We need to pray for the Supreme Court and for our people, uh, for our, the, the people that govern this country. They may not be our people, but they're our government. And uh, we might not like them, but they are the government. And we need to pray for the Supreme Court because there's a lot of threats going on. And uh, I don't think I want to be that person that leaked that document. Neither side is going to be happy with that person when they're done. So it, uh, it's, a very com it's a very complicated situation. Obviously, we as a church, we as Christians, we pretty much know where we want this to go. Um, you know, we don't, want, we don't want people killing babies for any reason. And uh, so, we, we, you know, will, will Roe v. Wade getting overturned stop that? No. But it'll, it'll start in the right direction. Okay, because it just goes it reverse back to state law. Now here, I think we already have a state law on the books. You know, Texas. There's thir thirteen countries. Or thirteen countries. <laughs> actually, yeah, I think I said that correctly. Actually, there are thirteen individual states. I think that have laws right now, outright banning, not six weeks or whatever, but just banning. I don't know. But we do need to pray for our government at all times, and certainly now. When things are um, things are crazy, things are strange, and uh, they can get stranger, we're hoping for good things. So let's pray tonight. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to meet tonight. Thank you that we're in the dry, and it's raining outside, but thank you, Lord, that we have this place where we can come and and uh, sit comfortably and 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 not have difficulties because of the rain or the cold weather outside. Lord, we pray even now for a return home tonight that you would give us safety. Uh, the roads will certainly be slick. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who tonight are not able to be here for whatever reason. And many will not be feeling well. Uh, Lord, several of our families are traveling and we pray for them. Uh, Lord, I pray for uh, Sister Holly Cooper is traveling pray that you bless her time with her daughter. pray that you be with Jonathan and Elizabeth as they're traveling. And uh, pray that you'd be with him tonight as he preaches. We pray that you'd help, help him to be a blessing and help her to be a blessing to uh, Jeffrey and to Charlotte and the family there and to the church. Uh, Lord, we pray for the bunches. And Lord, so, so far that we've heard uh, good things. And we're thankful that they were able to go even today to Arlington, Arlington Cemetery and, and see some things. And, uh, Lord, I just thank you that you've given them a good trip. Pray that you continue to protect them, give them safety. Father, thank you tonight for these requests that have been made, made known. Tonight, there's been several blessings mentioned, the financial blessing for the Davises and also for the Booths. And uh, we're thankful that these blessings have come. Uh, so many times, these medications and things that we have to take are so expensive prohibitively so. And Lord, I thank you that you have uh, opened the windows of heaven and, and let forth a blessing and dropped down the blessing on these folks, on these families. Lord, we thank, we're very thankful for how well Colleen is feeling and able to be in church. We're thankful for that. Uh, Lord, we pray for Jason and his blood pressure. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you'd help the doctor to uh, do what's necessary and help him uh, to reduce his pressure problem. And Lord, we do pray tonight for those who are uh, literally under the gun in Ukraine. And uh, it's hard to imagine the, the strain and the daily worry of, of losing your life 
just because you're in the wrong place, just because you're in the wrong building, under a bomb somewhere. And Father, I pray that you'd be with those people, that be with the children, be with the families, their emotional needs, Lord, their physical needs, the food and the water they need, uh, the place to sleep, the place to stay, Lord, and some kind of security for these families. I was glad today that I heard that that many uh, got out of the steel plant in southern Ukraine and were able to get out to a safer place, and we're very thankful for that tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd be uh, with our government and that you would be with the Supreme Court and the the three agencies of government, Lord, uh, the Congress and Senate and the, the White House. And, uh, Lord, I, I know that you can do anything, and I count on that, Lord, tonight as I pray that you would, that you'd bring peace between these people that, that have uh, so much power over our lives. And God, I pray that you would help cooler and sensible heads to prevail. And Lord, I know that uh, you're able to change hearts and minds. God, I pray for those people who are rioting in favor of killing children. I pray that you'd change their hearts. And Lord, that you'd work in them. God, I pray for our country. It's hard to imagine that, that, that the condemnation of God does not fall at any time. Lord, help us to be what we should be in our community. And Lord, to be a testimony to those around us in these dark days. Whether they be last days or no, Father, they are dark days. And Lord, help us to show the light and the love of Jesus Christ to our neighbors and to those around us. Father, thank you tonight for those that are here. We pray that you'd bless them, the meeting together. We pray that you'd uh, be with us as we open the scriptures and give us understanding. And Lord, guide us into all truth, we pray. And th we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Booz, would you come? We'll take up the offering. And then we'll sing one more hymn. We're going to sing 418. I'll remind you again, but 418. Do you pray for us, sir? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for an opportunity to be back in your house to hear from your word and the joining the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray you would impress it upon our minds and our hearts, Lord, that we might take it out and share it with a lost and dying world. Lord, thank you for loving us and taking such great care of us, Lord, even though we are so unworthy. Lord, we ask that you receive all the honor and glory for Amen. It's one of those things you don't think about. There's no music. <laughs> I guess I should have brought my Cheerios box and played it at offering time. I have a Cheerios box. Yeah, I thought you were. It's one of those things like just just keep it keep the mouth shut. Don't say it. <laughs> You're liable to get one. All right, 418. Your main seat is fine. 418. Trust and obey. <clears throat> we'll sing it pretty lively. So we don't want everybody going to sleep on us. Trust and obey, number 418. <clears throat> when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, 
for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our love <coughs> Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. On the last, then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet. Yes, <coughs> we will do where he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey That's good. It's good singing tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> this is getting better, but it's still not not right there. And Second um, Corinthians tonight. Second Corinthians. We're still not starting our new study necessarily, but I've been reading in Second Corinthians and uh, a book I've spent a lot of time in, and I like the book. It's like the rest of the Bible. It's good, you know. The Word of God is good. Second Corinthians, chapter one. We'll just be looking at three verses tonight. Second Corinthians, chapter one, and I, I do this with a certain amount of fear because I, I want to be careful to see the verses in context. And sometimes we have to read well in front and well in back of a verse or even two or three verses like we will tonight, and um, we want to make sure that we understand the context. This is the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And in this second letter, uh, it is my impression and my understanding from reading it that he opens up his heart in a different way than he did in the first letter. The first letter uh, there was a lot of correction, there were a lot of problems in the church, a uh, lot of uh, worldly, fleshly, and, and when I say worldly and fleshly, I mean people were walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. They were walking according to their own ideas and their own uh, desires. Uh, Corinth had some built-in problems as a city that maybe we wouldn't, other places didn't have, but uh, they had some really big problems in Corinth and they were affecting the church. And uh, the, um, there's two churches that we recognize as being rich churches, and both of them had problems, Corinth and Laodicea. Uh, we don't see a second Laodicea. We only see the first letter, although they did read, there was a letter that went to them from Paul, and, and in, in Colossians he says, make sure you read the letter from Laodicea and make sure they read your letter, Colossae. We don't have that. For whatever reason, the Spirit of God just determined that that was not a, a, a letter that would get into the, the canon of Scripture, the rule of Scripture, the measure of Scripture. So we have these 27, and that's fine. But the, it, it, Paul does mention it, that, that there was a letter written. 2 Corinthians tonight, chapter 1 and verse 20, For all the promises of God in Him, speaking of Christ, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. We'll just stop there. Just these three verses tonight. Father, give us understanding. Lord, open the scriptures, I pray. Lord, help me to share the things that I have been studying and seeing in these verses and that they might be a blessing to our, our people tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
For all the promises of God in Him, in Christ, are yea, and in Him, amen, uh, under the glory of God by us. Uh, there are four works or actions mentioned in this passage uh, tonight, and they are all works of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, we not do them ourselves. We don't do them to ourselves. God works in us to finish His work in us. Uh, but these are works that God does through His Spirit. Uh, we know this from the present context in these three verses in this book and chapter. Comparison, of course, may be made and should be made with the rest of the Bible to put these truths in the context of the whole New Testament and the whole Bible. And we should always do that. Uh, when you seek to understand um, something, when it starts talking about the Spirit, then you should look at the rest of the New Testament and see what the, the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Uh, what, you know, what else it says, because uh, there are a great number of verses about the, the work of the Spirit in the New Testament and the Old Testament. So comparison needs to be made with the rest of the Bible to put these truths in context with the rest. Uh, please don't leave tonight with the idea that only these four things are the work of the Spirit of God, for it is certainly not so. These are the four mentioned in this passage, and that's why I have chosen them. Uh, the Spirit convicts us, He guides us into all truth, He empowers us for witness, and much, much more. Uh, we will see four things that He does here tonight. We're studying these verses and what they tell us in the context of this chapter. So first thing we see, and I, I included verse 20 because it, it leads into this. He said, all the promises of God in Him are yea. He, he came out of a passage where He says that the preaching of the Word of God and the, the promises of the Word of God, in, in Christ there is no yea and yea and nay and nay. There is no, there's no two-facedness. There's no two messages. There is only yea and amen. Uh, the, the word amen is the word truly, truly. Truly, truly is amen, amen. It's the same word. Uh, these, are, these are affirmations of the truth. But as we see that, that they... As he says, that all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. He says, now, he which establishes you with us, uh, excuse me, establishes us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us as God. So the first thing we see is he establishes us. He establishes us. The text says, he which establisheth us. Establisheth and establish is the same thing. There's no difference. Notice that God's work in us is to establish us where? In Christ. In Christ. And now, if you want to take a time sometime and study, you can go through the book of Corinthians here. Uh, I would suggest Ephesians. I would say a lot of places where that phrase, in Christ, is mentioned. And there are a great number of things that talk about our position, uh, the power that we have, the privilege that we have, our family possession that we have, that we're the children of God in Christ, uh, the election of God in Christ. All of this has to do with our connection with Him. And uh, we see all of these things in the New Testament, and they're, they're hinted at in the Old Testament, but they're specifically mentioned here in the New Testament. So we see that He is working in us to establish us in Christ. Now this happens, first of all, in salvation. Uh, 2 Corinthians, we're right here in chapter 1, verse 5, and chap chapter 5 and verse seven, I, 17, I should say. Verse I should be able to um, pull out of my memory since it's the first verse I memorized after I got saved. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any person, any man, mankind, it, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, he says, he continues, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. So, you know, this is, the, this is the point at which we need to understand salvation. Salvation that doesn't change us is not salvation. I don't know what it is, but of a person, I, I'm not saying it'll change everybody the same way or to the same degree. But when Christ is in someone, and we're in Christ, it changes us. Now, the changes might be slower for some people. Some people pick up things. Some people learn things quicker. Um, you know, I, I know people that, that, that mature in Christ very slowly, and others that just seem like overnight they just, they're different people, you know. And um, 
I mean, you could go through all of the outside changes, you know, well, he came in here and he had long hair and the next church service he had short hair. and That doesn't mean you're in Christ. There's a fellow named Tom that worked for my dad in his shop up in Colorado. He worked on cars. They had things called creepers. Those are not bugs. Those are little wooden things with little wheels that never go the right direction. They never go the way you want to go. They never do. Tom had long hair. They called him Hippie Tom. Of course, it was Colorado. It was the 70s. There was a lot of hippies. They called him Hippie Tom. He really wasn't a hippie. He just had long hair because a hippie is a thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, so they called him Hippie Tom, and they always razzed him about getting his hair cut. Eh, he like laugh it off, you know. He rolled in there working on a car one day, and he rolled up underneath there, and the scream that came out from underneath that car, because he ran over his hair, and he pulled out about an inch patch out of the back of his head. And he got up out of that car, and they were all laughing at him. He just, he walked right out. They thought, okay, well, we just lost a mechanic. He came back a little bit later. He had a buzz cut. Had a patch on the back of his head. Because <laughs> he was missing some skin. So, yeah, you know what? That changed him. But was it Jesus? No, it was the creeper. <laughs> okay. So changes can happen to people. People that smoke, they get, they get scared, and they can get scared because they saw somebody at cancer clinic, and it, they just change like that. Is it Christ? Is it, is it salvation? Maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just he got scared. He saw a poster about somebody with black lung. He said, I don't want to go there, so I'll stop. His life changed. So change in and of itself is not salvation, but salvation that has no change, I worry about. I worry that it's not true salvation. And that's not work salvation. Listen, uh, Jesus was the one that said, you shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by what the faith in them produces, what the grace of God produces in them. Uh, we're born of the Spirit in John chapter 3. We're established as God's child by the Spirit of God. This is a work that He does in us. He establishes us in the family of God. Born of the Spirit, John chapter 3. Not only does He do this in salvation, but He does this in sanctification. Uh, the, the Bible says this in, in 1 Peter, that we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied, he says. So there's the sanctification of the Spirit. Now there's other verses, but I'm trying to keep this down to a low rumble, so uh, I'll give you that one. Romans 16, 25, 2 Thessalonians 2, 17, and, and other verses in 3, 3. But he does this through salvation. He also does this through sanctification. Uh, he establishes us in Christ. It is not, it's God the Father working, but He's working through the Spirit of God. You see, the Spirit of God is working in our hearts to establish us. Now, He which establisheth you with, us with you in Christ is God. And He also does this to establish us in the body of Christ, the church. Uh, second, uh, First Corinthians, He said this, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. I would not have you ignorant. That sounds like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I would not have you be ignorant concerning them which are asleep. But he said, now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols. Now, that means they can't speak, but they're also pretty dumb. Idol worship is just about as dumb and stupid as you can be. Even as you were led, he says. Oh, you went after them, but the people leading you were bad too. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Ha. Ah. You run into somebody that's cursing Jesus and you might want to check him out. Because no man according to the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh in you, uh, worketh all in all. And here's the verse. But, by manif but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. If we were to go over and look at Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the, 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 the joints and the marrow supplying for the whole, every part supplying to the body. 
So there's a, there's a matter of the Spirit of God preparing us and establishing us in the body of Christ to bless the church. Um, I've said it a hundred times. I'll say it another hundred times. Uh, Jesus chose to use the church. So if you choose to do something else, you're doing something that Jesus didn't want you to do. Uh, this is the church, the, the one that, that this is the idea that God came up with. It, uh, Matthew 16, 18. He didn't say, I will build anything else. He said, I will build my church, my assembly, my group, not the building. Jesus wasn't into building tabernacles or temples or, you know, with or without big angels on the roof. It doesn't matter. Then he says, not only does he, um, let me turn back to that. I'm over in 1st 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, not only does he establish with us, he also anoints us. He said, he has established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us. This is God that does this. He hath anointed us. It is God that does this work. Now let me say this, and I've said this a few times too. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. The very name means anointed one. You see, Jesus' name is not Christ. That's his title. He is the anointed one. It's Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus means Savior or Deliverer, uh, just as Joshua did in the Old Testament. It's, it's the same name. It's not the same person. I'm not saying that Jesus in the Old Testament was Joshua. That's not what I mean. They have the same name, okay? And uh, when we get to Matthew chapter 1 and the birth of Christ and the, the, he's coming and uh, he's talking about it and it said, and she shall bring forth a son, talking about Mary, and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. He's a deliverer. Joshua was a deliverer. That's why he was named Joshua. Jesus has come to deliver us from our sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the, of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, not just a young woman, but a virgin, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So he's also called Emmanuel, but his name is Jesus. What they called him was Jesus. What he was known to his family was Jesus. But he would never cease to be. He did not become Jesus the Christ. He was anointed Okay, from the very beginning. He didn't wait until he was baptized and that was his anointing. That's not what, that's not what the Bible teaches. Christ is a title. It's formed from the word anoint or anointed. He is the anointed of God. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, the church was praying. Uh, they had been threatened. The church in Acts chapter 4 was praying and they said, The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, his anointed for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, <laughs> both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Uh, they were attacking, they were persecuting, they were trying to kill and ended up killing the Son of God, thy holy child Jesus, he says, they said in their prayer. He said that they're, that they're gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. So it's a title. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with saying that's his complete name. It would be saying like, I don't know, Dr. Nelson, you know, because he is. Now he studied and he came by that, you know, differently than Christ came by his title, but it is certainly a title. The last name of Mary and Joseph was not Christ. That's not what, that's what I'm saying, okay? But he is the anointed one. No man can claim this title for himself. No man should be attributed this title anointed. For only Jesus is the anointed of God. Now, I know that we use that title rather loosely, and we use that title and not as so much as a title, but as an adjective. Well, that was anointed, you know. And the Bible doesn't really support that, but we do use it that way. And that's okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't. You probably shouldn't. I just say shouldn't, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Just lower it down a little bit. Because the Bible never tells us that. It never uses it in that way, ever, ever. The only, way, the only other way it uses anointing is like the anointing with oil, and that's not at all the same thing. Uh, this word is used 
specifically of the anointing of the Spirit of God. Now in 1 John chapter 4, two years ago, we looked at this. The anointing that we have, according to 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 and 27, is the Spirit of God in us, the unction. It's the indwelling of the Spirit of God. Now listen, all believers are anointed in this manner. It isn't just the pastor, the missionary, the, the special super-duper Christian that you know, does wonderful things. All believers are anointed, have the unction of the Spirit of God. All believers are anointed in this manner, not just the chosen few. And I would, show, I would say you, we should be cautious as it's the cults and false religions of this world that speak of their leaders as being anointed by God. I'm thinking of people like David Koresh, the anointed one. He called himself Christ. Well, he took that title not saying that he was Jesus the Christ, but that he was anointed. Well, that didn't work out so well. Uh, it didn't protect him from the bullets and the bombs and the fire from the FBI and the ATF and all the other stuff. He was crazy. And he got a lot of his people killed. Uh, other people, you know, I, I'm just pulling one out and the list is so big we could not finish it tonight. Uh, cults and false religions of all kinds. Our leader is the anointed one, you know. I mean, even presidents have been, that's, that's been said about presidents and they were certainly not the anointed one. Certainly not. I don't care who they are. Um... The anointing is connected with us knowing the truth of God's Word, helping us to grow in Christ. He, he said in 1 John chapter 4, I didn't write this verse down, so I need to just look at this real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible says, uh, if any man say I love God, that's not the right verse. What did I put that down for? Hmm. That is certainly 1 John. I said 20, and there is no 27. But that's what's written down there. I don't know how that works. Probably. It's chapter 2. And I don't know how I got chapter 4 on here. My concordance broke. It is certainly chapter 2, excuse me. But you have an unction, verse 20, from the Holy One, and you know all things. Well, you see, the connection of knowing the the teachings of the Bible and having the Spirit of God in our life, that's connected. And, and it should connect. John chapter 14, John chapter 16, when Jesus promised that the Spirit of God would come, the paraclete, the other comforter, that He would come, I will send you the comforter. Uh, did you know the word comfort? You know, all, every time you see it, you see it a lot here in 2 Corinthians, right in the beginning of it. It's the same word as the Holy Ghost said, being said, called the comforter. One called alongside to comfort. But the Holy Ghost is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. And uh, he is said to uh, not only bring things to remember so that they could write the New Testament, but also to guide us into all truth. Uh, there's, the, there's, a, there's an issue in understanding the Word of God. You can study it, and men have. You can have all the books in the library. You can read them all. You can have a head full of knowledge, but this is a spiritual book. And it's the Spirit of God that helps us understand what the meaning really is. And without Him, many, 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 many people have gone astray because they think they know and they miss the meaning of the Scripture. Now, I'm not saying that there's a spiritual meaning that's not written on the page, that you can guess it somehow and you can... Yeah, well, that got us in trouble. Joseph and his glasses, and not Joseph in Egypt, but the other Joseph in Palmyra, New York, in his special glasses that read Egyptian. And, you know, well, that wasn't the Spirit of God that led him to do that. Uh, that's kind of reading between the lines badly. So, you know, we have to be careful because it is the false cults that, that abuse this anointing. But every Christian has the anointing of a God. Every person that, is, that belongs to Jesus has the anointing of a God. Now, I'll show you another verse here in just a minute. But not only does He anoint us, He also seals us. It is God who hath also sealed us, He says. Uh, several things. Seal sealing gives us assurance. We are sealed by God. 
You remember John, uh, excuse me, John was talking, but it was actually Revelation chapter 5. And he wept much because no one prevailed to open the seals of the book and look on, look on it, lick therein. But who was able to open that book and, and seal, unseal the book? The Lamb of God. Only one person. Bible says to us here and in other places that we're sealed. He says here in, in our verse, uh, Now he which stableth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So first thing he said, he sealed us. Listen, if you're sealed by God, it's just like John chapter 10. You're in his hand, you're in Christ's hand, you're in God's hand. The only way that can be is if I'm in Jesus' hand and then I'm in God's hand. You know, somebody said, well, you can jump out. Really? You can get out? Nobody can get in and get you out. But you can go in there and, and you can be in there and just jump out? That's kind of silly. It's in the same passage. It, he just got done saying, I, I know my sheep. They follow me. He said, I give unto them eternal life and they what? So never perish. And no man shall pluck them out of my hand. Well, you could pluck yourself out. Oh, you're not a person then. Because it just said that no man could do it. So sealing gives us assurance. Jude said this in his first verse. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To them which are sanctified by God the Father. That's the saved. And listen to this. And preserved in Jesus Christ. And called. Now I know some... Some of the ladies here, I know that you've made jellies or jams and you've put them in those clean ball jars and you've boiled them and the jar lids are clean. And, or maybe you did like my mom used to do. They had the wax on the top of it. You know, they boiled, melted the wax and put across the top of the jar. Occasionally, those preserves go bad. But it's mostly because the seal wasn't good. We're preserved in Christ and I guarantee you the seal will hold. That gives us assurance. You see, we, we derive assurance because God hath sealed us. Sealing demonstrates ownership. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Now listen to this. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You know what he next says? He says this. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Sealing shows, demonstrates ownership. We're owned by him. So I don't want to be owned by anybody. Paul didn't even think about it. He didn't even twitch when he said, Paul the servant of Christ, the slave, the bond slave. The bond slave was that guy, unfortunately, that they took him over to the door and the all and put a punch through his ear. And he said, You're not going to get rid of that, Mark. Everybody sees you're a slave. That's what kind of slave Paul said. He said, I'm sold out. I am completely He's my Lord, I am his servant, whatever he says goes. And that's completely sellout. He owns me. It demonstrates ownership. Sealing also provides security. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Sealing provides security. We're secure in Christ. We're secure in Christ. What, what God has begun to do, He will finish. Sealing also shows our destination. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Same thing, right? Except He finishes it. Unto the day of redemption. You're sealed now and you will be until the day of redemption. You know, the day of redemption reminds me of the sell-by date on so many products, you know. Best if used by. Nobody knows the date on my day of redemption, do they? But it's until that day. Well, when's that day? Don't know. It's on the calendar. Well, look on the calendar. It's not on my calendar. It's on his calendar. <laughs> Under the day of redemption. I'm sealed and I'm secure now. And I'm sealed tomorrow. And I'm sealed the next day. Unto the day of redemption. 
But then it talks about, and he has given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. It's the fourth thing. He gives us the down payment. You know, I, I like this because the Bible tells us, and we'll get to this in just a minute in Ephesians 1, he tells us just what this, this down payment is for. He said, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. But it doesn't say what that earnest is. What that guarantee money is for. It's for the promise of the final transaction. We know that. That's what earnest money is. You go and buy a house, you put money down. You go and buy a car, oftentimes, I don't know about nowadays, I haven't bought a car in so long, I don't even know. You put down money, hold it, you know. But Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 says this, that we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ. Now I'm, I'm reading this whole text so that we understand what he says in the end. That we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you, after ye have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look at there, it's the same thing. Which is the earnest of what? The earnest of our inheritance. It's not just, well, it's not just, okay, I, I'm, I'm with God now, and if I behave myself, then I'll still be with God at the end, and I'll be okay. Not that at all. He has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. God, can I tell you this? That God doesn't break His promise. He's not an Indian giver. And I'm sorry to all the Indians in the world. The dot Indians and the feather Indians. That's, you know, He's not an Indian giver. I don't think Indians were like that. I think probably white men were like that. But <laughs> Didn't we start this out? For all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him, amen. Under the glory of God by us. That's how we started out. You see, this is... You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Now, when will we get it, our inheritance? Until the day of redemption, the purchased possession. You see, this is a down payment. We've got the Spirit of God in our lives. It's God's guarantee for us. It's God's guarantee. It's His messenger that says, I'm with you. I have paid for you. You are my child. And one day, you will be in my kingdom. And it will be our kingdom. Because I have an inheritance. It's an earnest of our inheritance. Not only salvation, not only salvation now, not only a, a secure uh, living now that I am in Christ, that I know that I am, and I, I know that I'm okay. I don't just have God in my life to, you know, take care of all of the little problems. Sometimes the little problems don't get taken care of. It isn't the fact that God isn't with us. But I'm looking for the big one. We're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. With Christ in God, in heaven, in our inheritance. John chapter 14. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Even if he said cottage, brother, up there, a little pup tent's better than down here. It's better than all these houses over there on state line. It's better than all of that stuff over in, 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 in country club. Better than all that. I just pointed at Canada, so you know what I mean. It's over there. But I say things, and, you know, down in Kansas, and we're talking about Australia, you know, that way, whatever. Mm, 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 mm. But he said mansions. The earnest of our inheritance until the day of re uh, redemption of the purchased possession. What is the purchased possession? I am. You are. He purchased us with his own blood. And we're sealed with the spirit of promise until the day of redemption. It's the earnest of our inheritance. He can give us the spirit of God while we wait. While we wait. And our hope is what? Our hope is our earnest expectation that God will keep His promises. Our text said it. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him are amen. You see? They are yes and they are true. So what does it mean? 
Not one more verse. Not only is the Spirit as a payment the earnest of our inheritance, it is the promise of the final transaction. It's the promise of God that He will work in us until the day of redemption. Philippians 1. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. One of the most, uh, the, it's a striking verse. I've, you know what I thought when I thought about this? When it really, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks one day. Well, 400 pounds of bricks. Um, <clears throat> maybe two bricks. Anyway, it, it hit me. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I can imagine him walking down the, 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 the lonely trails between, I don't know, Ephesus and wherever, and looking over at Timothy and he's saying, oh my goodness, I was just thinking about those Philippians. Oh, I thank God for them. You know when he wrote this? He was in prison in Rome. We left him there the other day. <laughs> Acts 28. We just left him there. That's where we had to leave him. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And listen to this. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ, unto the day of redemption of the purchased possession. You see, God is going to continue to work in us. He began working in us by renewing us completely, making us a new creature. He, the, the, the washing of regeneration, Paul said to Titus. The, the washing of the water with the word make us white. He renewed us to a new life. He gave us life where there was only death. But what does it mean for us? Can I say to you that God does all these things? And He does a lot more, but we're looking at these four things. He does all this through His eternal Spirit. He works in us so that we might be His sons and daughters, that we might be established in the faith, secure in the knowledge of our salvation, for by grace through faith, and that we would be prepared unto every good work, as Paul said to Titus, certain of our home in heaven, and joyful in the knowledge of his Son. God's salvation of us, his people, is a sure salvation. Amen. We are secure in his sealing. Having received the earnest of our inheritance, the promise of God that he will finish what he has begun. Paul said this to Timothy, and we sing this, don't we? He said, For the which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know in whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul had this assurance. Paul had an assurance that what God began that first day on the road to Damascus he would continue to work in him until he took him home, until the day of redemption. God, do, God does all this for his own glory. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, under the glory of God by us. You see, our, our theme verse in our church in Africa, it became it, really. We didn't just choose it, it kind of chose us. We used to sing that song, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Hath Done. That was a theme. I mean, we had T-shirts made about our church and our, I don't remember what anniversary it was. It's June 24th, but I don't remember which one it was. But we had T-shirts made and 50 or 60 or 100 people bought T-shirts and we had To God Be the Glory. Adios demos gloria. To God be the glory because great things He hath done. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, under the glory of God by us. Listen, there, there's dark days. Days of sickness, days of financial difficulty. I mean, we've all been there. Days of trouble, uh, days of complicated family matters, days of church problems, and days of this and days of that. But I'm going to tell you there's a brighter day coming. And that promise and that hope we have as steadfast as an anchor for the soul. And we can rely 
on God's promises. All may fail us. God will not. His word will not fail us. His person, he will not fail us. Jesus Christ didn't come to the earth to fail. He came to the earth to win, to have victory over sin in the grave. 1 Corinthians 15, the end of it. You know, oh, grave, where is thy victory? Where is thy sting? Where is thy gra where is it? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? You see, we have victory in Christ. He does these things. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, amen, under the glory of God by us. Now He which establishes us with you in Christ, and He which anointed us is God, who, God, hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Listen, these are great and exceeding promises of God. We should count on them. Amen. We should daily rest upon these promises. You see, you know, the older I get, the more weary I get, the easier, the more weary I get. <laughs> How can I say that? It's easy to get weary. It's easy to just say, well... Don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know what's going to happen. It's easy to just not give up, but just get discouraged. It's easy. You can't get discouraged reading a verse like that. Not unless you just don't understand it. And I think it's pretty clear. He established us. He has anointed us. He has sealed us. And he has given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. These are works of God through His Spirit in our lives. If we're Christian tonight, if you're saved and know it. You know, this is, this is the Spirit of God working us. Yeah, He does a lot of other things. Acts chapter 1, you know. Uh, he gave us the power to be witnesses. The Spirit of God's in our life to change us. I talked about sanctification, but there's a bigger story there. We are becoming new we were made new creatures. We were given new life, but we're becoming new. You know, and the more we read the Bible, the more we understand the Bible, the more we apply it in our lives, the more we grow, the more we mature as, as his children, as his sons and daughters. And honestly, the more we know what the joy of the Lord really is. And these things should bring joy. I know I've got a a, a frown crease on the top of me here because I got a headache and my eye hurts. <laughs> Maybe if I close that one, it won't hurt so much. I don't know. But the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah. And it will strengthen us. Take joy in that He is promised and He is working and His promises are true, they will never fail. Don't take them to the bank, because the bank will fail. Keep them in your heart. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for your blessings. Thank you for your goodness to us in the land of the living. Lord, thank you that we were able to be here tonight, and uh, that we got safely here. Lord, I pray that you give us safely home. But Lord, help us in the difficult days to look to the Word of God for guidance. God, through your Spirit, teach us the Word. Well, I've been reading the Bible for more than 40 years. But sometimes when I come to it, I feel like I'm just looking at it the first time. God, help me to understand this Word. Help it to be ever fresh and new, but Lord, help it also to be something that it so establishes us in the faith that, Lord, it's an old friend, that it's an old guide. It's a guide we've walked with and we know. And, Lord, I pray that you would lead us and guide us. Father, I pray that you'd be with our families that are out traveling. I pray that you give us safety home tonight. Lord, we're thankful for your word. Thank you for the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.